What's up? If you're watching this video, you have just purchased a 533 ready to fly drone and it's been delivered to your doorstep. Today, this is the quick start guide. We're gonna go step by step to help you get in the air as fast as possible with a brand new controller, no experience whatsoever. We're gonna give you the cheat code to get in the air as soon as possible. By the end of this video, you'll be able to take your drone out of the box, connect it to your controller, safely go through your first test flight, and then you're off to the races to uh, go have fun and fly your new 553 ready to fly. Really excited, and uh, hopefully this video is uh, beneficial to you guys. Step number one is going to be taking your drone out of the box and getting it connected to your controller via Express LRS. The way we're gonna be doing that is using Wi-Fi on your laptop or phone and a bind phrase. If you don't know what a bind phrase is, I do have a video linked in the description below that goes way more in depth, but assuming you do know what a bind phrase is, we are now going to plug in the drone with the propellers off for maximum safety before we go any further. I'm a professional, drones are a lot of fun, but they can be dangerous, so if you're gonna be plugging in a battery, especially with no controller connected, make sure those props are off when you're on the bench at any time. Once the drone is plugged in, you're going to be looking for your Express LRS receiver. This is very commonly a small component with a green flashing light on it. You'll see when it's plugged in initially, it's going to be flashing at about once every second. However, after 60 seconds of not being connected to a controller, it's going to start flashing rapidly. You'll be able to tell, trust me, it flashes really, really fast. That's when you'll be able to connect to it on your laptop or phone via the Express LRS Wi-Fi network and put in your bind phrase there. Once the receiver is in Wi-Fi mode, I'm just gonna come up here to my Wi-Fi and I see now that Express LRS RX is open. So I'm gonna click on that. If it does prompt you for a password, the password is Express LRS, all lowercase, no spaces. But I've already put the password in and it's a save to your device. So my computer automatically opens up this Express LRS wizard, if you will. And I'm gonna type in my bind phrase of this video, calling it YouTube. It is very important to note that capitalizations matter, spaces matter, you can use numbers, you can use special characters, I'm pretty sure, yep, you can. After you have your bind phrase in there, we're gonna go to the bottom, click save, set configuration, click OK, and now we're going to unplug the drone and plug it back in. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my remote. It's set to YouTube here, it's set to YouTube here. As long as those bind phrases match, your controller will tell you that it's connected, and you'll be off to the next step, which is your radio setup. Step number two is going to be your radio setup. So your drone is now connected to your controller via Express LRS. However, there is a small amount of configuration in your remote that we're gonna go into now. The first thing we need to make sure of is that in this specific model, you have Express LRS turned on. So the way I'm gonna do that is by pressing model. I'm going to scroll up, which will take me to the bottom of the screen. And I'm going to look for internal RF and external RF. Now this controller here has Express LRS built in. So what I'm gonna do is go to internal RF, the mode is currently set to off. Um, all I'm going to do is change that to CRSF, which stands for Crossfire, which is the protocol that Express LRS operates over. If I had a module here in the back, or if you have a Crossfire module here in the back, you're actually gonna turn internal RF to off and set external RF to CRSF. You have to do this on each model, so if you are opening a brand new remote, it's going to come with everything turned off, or if you're setting up a new model for this drone, you also need to do this step. Up next, we need to set your radio up for AETR. That might not make a lot of sense right now, but your radio should come like this by default. We just have to verify that and set up our switches. So I'm going to click model, and I'm going to page over to the mixes tab. What AETR stands for is channels one, two, three, four, and you'll see as a brand new blank model, channel one is aileron, two elevator, three throttle, four rudder, and that goes to AETR. However, you'll see that there's nothing assigned to channels five, six, seven, or eight, and channel five would be aux one, channel six would be aux two, channel seven would be aux three, and channel eight would be aux four. That can be a little bit confusing, but just know that those start from channel five. So every single ready to fly drone from 533 is going to come with aux one set up as your arm switch. So I'm gonna come down here to channel five, click it, click edit, and then now go to source and assign my arm switch to SA. That's what I use mine as. 
Now when I go back, you'll see that on channel five, it is assigned to switch SA. Now, channel six, aux two, is where I'll have my mode changing switch. We'll show you how to set this up in Betaflight, but I always use switch SE here to change my modes, like turtle mode or auto level or acro mode. So I'm gonna come here to edit, go to source, flip this switch, and now on channel six, or aux two, I have this switch set up. Just for the sake of this video, I'm going to set up one more switch in case I had a GPS or any amount of auxiliary modes set up. So channel seven, edit, source, flip SB. And now I have three aux switches set up. Once you've done this, your radio should be set up properly. And now we can hop into the third step, which is beta flight setup. Now we're into step three, which is beta flight setup, which basically just means you're gonna make sure your sticks are working properly and your modes are set up right to the right switch. I'm gonna plug my drone into beta flight here, no battery required. Come in here to beta flight. And now I'm gonna come over to the receiver tab. And this is where you cross your fingers, you move the sticks and things are actually moving. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna come down here to the channel map and we're gonna say your channels were set up incorrectly because I wanna show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna set it to T-A-E-R just for the sake of this video. And you'll see that the drone is spinning uncontrollably and rolls throttle and throttles pitch and it's just not right. So if you see this happening, all you're gonna do is change or try one of the three options. All 53 ready to flies come on default, which is A-E-T-R. Save that and you're back in business. But it is good practice to make sure that right is right, left is left, throttle is throttle, and pitch is pitch. Just a good check to do. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check and make sure those switches we set up are working properly. So SA, that's aux one, that's working. SE, that should be aux two, that's working. And SB, that should be aux three, that is working. So we know that the drone is receiving all the proper commands. Now we need to set up our modes. So now we come over here to the left hand side. We go to modes, which is just one tab down. Once you come over here to modes, you're gonna see that your arm switch is set up on aux one high. So as long as you have a switch set up on aux one, then it's going to move properly. And when the yellow dash is in between the yellow bars, that means that the drone is in the arm position. So if you like the arm position here and not here, uh, then all you gotta do is just move it over, click save, and now when I put it there, it's now in the right position. So you can customize that to your own liking. Now the modes I'm gonna set up on mine is flip over after crash in angle mode. So I'm gonna come down here to flip over after crash, click add range. I'm gonna assign that to this switch and I want it to be all the way down like this. So I'm just gonna drag the yellow bar. And then after that, I wanna come over to angle mode, just in case I wanna let my buddies fly this one. Add range, flip SB. It's gonna automatically detect it because I've already set it up. I want this to be angle mode, so I'll slide this over here. Click save after everything you do in beta flight. And for the most part, that wraps up your beta flight setup. Your controller is connected, the switches are moving properly, the sticks are moving properly, and in theory, you should be able to go out and fly right now. One bonus tip, I like to put my name on my OSD, that's what all the cool guys do. If you wanna do that on your drone, all you're gonna do is go over to configuration, come down to craft name, it's more than likely gonna say something like the name of your drone. I put mine as heads up, uh, and that's just heads up, capital H, capital U, save and reboot, and now on your on-screen display, your name, or whatever you wanna put, goofy or not, is gonna be on your OSD. And uh, that wraps up the beta flight setup. All right, now we're into step four, which is our final safety check and putting on our props. All of these drones here at 523 are test flown right behind me on this track. So they're all tested and tuned to perfection and I guarantee that every single one that comes out the door. But it's on a different controller, the environment may be a little bit different and it's always good to do this one test before you put your props on to make sure your drone is good to go. So turn your controller on, plug in a battery with no props on and we're gonna do the following. All we're gonna do is put our throttle at zero. We're gonna arm the drone. We're gonna pick it up, and all I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna yaw right, and that'll yaw the drone. I'm gonna yaw left, that'll yaw the drone. And if it yaws the correct direction, there is a 99.9% .9 chance your drone is set up properly on your controller, and this drone is going to fly safely out of the box. And if it passes that test right there, then it's going to fly every single time and you're good to put props on. We're gonna unplug the battery for that and we're going to get out our props. Your drone is going to come with a set of props with your 533 drone. These are the R29s, which we have been including with all of our five inch drones. 
So when you take your props out of the bag, you see there's going to be two of each direction. You can put them on top of one another and you'll see, hey, these props are not the same, but these two are. So you'll have two that'll spin clockwise and two that will spin counterclockwise, and these will be the same. One thing to note on any FPV drone is that the same props go on identical corners. So if this is prop A and it goes here, then the other prop A is gonna go over here and vice versa. Never, ever will you have two props that spin the same direction side by side on any quadcopter. Now, the way to know which propeller spins which way is first to know how the drone is configured. And every single 533 ready to fly is set up for props out. That means that when the props are on the drone and the drone is armed, the tips are going to spin away from the camera. So the tips here, it's gonna spin away from the camera in this way. So this one's spinning this way and this one's spinning this way. So now we need to set up our props properly. The way I've always been taught to do it is put your props upright on the table and we're gonna put the tips up. You're going to then look at the tip that's pointed up and you're gonna see which side is off the table. So the left side is off the table or the left side is higher. This one is going to spin to the left. So this would go on here, spinning to the left and that would be the proper prop. So again, I'm gonna show you here, we'll compare these two. You're gonna see when we put them on upright, and the way you know they're upright is if the little indentations are upright. This one says HQ prop and R29, etc. You can set them on the table with the one tip pointed up. The left side of this propeller is up, so it's gonna to spin to the left, put it on here. And the right side of this propeller is off the table or is higher, and so it's gonna to spin to the right. So these, these propellers will spin this way and that would indicate props out. Now, once you have the front props on, we're just gonna match the corners. So this prop matches this one perfectly. Put it over here on the corner. This prop matches this one perfectly. Put it over here on this corner. And now you have your props on properly for a props out configuration, which is how every single 533 ready to fly comes pre-configured. Now I'm gonna put these nuts on, grab our prop tool of choice, and get them nice and tight. One question that I do get a lot is how tight do I need to put these props on? You're gonna see that I'm not putting all of my strength into this thing. I would say I usually get it to what's comfortably tight, like this feels like it's on there pretty good, and then I just give it a click more than that, and that'll lock in any propeller on any FPV drone. Once you do get into the bigger drones, like a seven inch or a 10 inch, the props get so big that they have enough torque to actually loosen a prop nut, which I have had happen before, very unfortunately. Um, so on those bigger drones, you will need to tighten them a lot more. Uh, but on a five inch drone, get them down reasonably tight, but you don't have to put your back into it by any means uh, to get it as tight as you need. Now we've made it to step number five, which is the test flight procedure. This is gonna be the way that I like to do it and the way that every 533 drone is test flown. I'm not saying it's the perfect way, but this is a very safe way. It does involve flying the drone line of sight, but I will note a couple different variations if you're not comfortable flying the drone line of sight to do this with goggles as well. But of course, step number one is going to be putting the battery on, toss it on like so, tighten it up, and we're gonna make sure our controller is on and the arm switch is in the disarm position. And for any first test flight, what I like to do is put the controller down in a safe place and plug the drone in separately. I don't wanna be like holding the controller like this and plugging it in because although I'm very sure I know how my switches are set up, it's not 100%, it never is. So set the controller down in the disarm position and then plug in the drone separately and set it down before you even touch that controller again. I'm now going to set the drone in the grass far away from anything that I could possibly hit. Specifically, I don't want anything above me. So if you have like a carport or something, I wouldn't do it in there. If anything happens, you wanna make sure you're in an open space. This is on the smaller side for a test flight. Uh, it would be better if you're in a soccer field or a big open field, but the big things are make sure you have at least 10 feet around you in any direction and there's nothing above you and you should be good. Okay, setting the drone down flat with the camera away from me. Regardless if you can fly line of sight or not, the original test arm, in my opinion, should be done with the goggles up. This is for two reasons. 
because you're going to arm the drone and be ready to disarm it immediately. Also, you want to have the peripheral vision to know nobody's around you walking around the drone, etc. But the second reason, or third reason I guess, is going to be that when you arm it, we're going to push left and push right and make sure the drone follows that command. And in goggles, it's just a little bit tough to make sure that it's doing that. Additionally, one last reason to do it line of sight is for the first arm, you need to make sure that all four propellers are spinning. If you're in the goggles and you arm it, you can't tell if all four are really spinning. So let's go through those checks right now. The drone is about 10 feet away, throttles all the way down, got all my switches set up properly. We're gonna arm, it's just gonna sit there, okay? But all I'm gonna do is push left, it goes left. Push right, it goes right. Left, and then I'm gonna push forward, forward's working, back's working. If it passes that test right there, the arm, left, right, forward, backwards, it doesn't have to be big pushes, it doesn't have to do anything fancy. If it just, if you see it moving in the correct way, this drone will fly 99.9% .9 of the time. This is where if you can't fly line of sight, you would put your goggles on and go for a nice safe test flight away from people. So now it's time to actually fly, arming the drone, I'm gonna slowly raise the throttle and just get it to a hover. Check all of our commands, so right, left, forwards, back, y'all left, y'all right, a little throttle pump. And that's the, it doesn't need to be anything full throttle. I always like to give just a small pump. It all feels good. And then, if at this point you're not under the goggles, it's now time to put on the goggles and go out for a flight. If you are under the goggles, continue your test flight and you'll be, uh, you'll be good to go. That wraps up the quick start guide for today. I hope this has helped you get in the air. I know this didn't cover the video systems because there's so many different video systems out there. It's a little difficult to put in one quick start guide, but if you have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to support at fly533.com. And if you end up taking this thing and smashing it into a tree and need a repair, we do have the FPV Pit Stop program where you can get this thing repaired or get on a call for us to help you fix it at any point in time. You have chosen to support 533 by watching this video and getting a 533 ready to fly. So we wanna make sure you have the best experience possible. Never hesitate to reach out. We're so honored that you have given us your business and we can't wait to hear how much you enjoy your 533 ready to fly. See you guys around. I'm gonna keep flying.